Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 505. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as you don't call me less. It's Sunday night, so that means it was football. Did your Steelers play? They did. Did they win? They did. Who did they play against? They played against the Cleveland Browns, mm. and they destroyed them. <laughs> um, so that was fun. They're actually, the Steelers are undefeated this season so far. Knock on, like, not to knock on wood, because they are. That's not changing. But Mm -hmm. in the future, it probably will. Um, They're playing Tennessee next week, which means that I would actually get the game. Mm -hmm. I think they're playing Tennessee, Tennessee or Baltimore. But I'm taking an online knitting class instead of watching them next week. Mm. So Uh, how does it work? What time that is. Do, do are people actually in the stadiums or so they have like five thousand people in the stadiums they have to social distance while they're there yeah and... i think the stadium let's see how how many the capacity of heinz field is i think it's around thirty thousand. so how do they get to decide who who gets in i don't know i have no idea because i'm hmm. not there and not every um not every like stadium is like they just this is the first game that they've allowed mm. people in the sands, I guess. Um, okay, 68,000. I'm a total liar, so that's much smaller than 5,000 is much smaller than 68,000. I would assume that it's probably only season ticket holders mm. that are getting in and like friends and family, yeah. um, would be my assumption. But I don't know, because I'm not going to get tickets to the Steelers because I live in Mississippi. Not in Pittsburgh. And not in Pittsburgh. And I don't intend on traveling anytime soon to anything. Yeah, so. especially now. Mm. Um, when they were, you know, if this was not a pandemic, um, I, might, if, I think they're playing Tennessee in Tennessee. I might have tried to get tickets for that game. But also, football tickets are really expensive. They are, yeah. And while I loved that, like, I got to go to Steelers games growing up, um, like, one a season. It was a big splurge for our parents, even back in, like, the 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I could shell out $300 for nosebleed seats. Yeah. Yeah. Plus everything else that goes with it. Because I'm not going to drive to Nashville and stay late and then have to drive home. Right. Like I would have to get a hotel room or something. Plus you have um, to budget for the, you know, $12 sodas and yeah, $18 absolutely. popcorn. and Because if you're going to do it, you're going to go full <laughs> yeah. out. Um, but yeah. When I was growing up, the Pittsburgh Pirates, which is their baseball team, used to have buck days because they're pirates like buccaneers. Mm. And like um, seats in the stands were a dollar and hot dogs and soda and everything like bottled water was a dollar. And it was a way to allow families to have that more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. And they did that like twice a year, I want to say. Um, so it did allow more fans to go and they still might do it. I don't, I haven't lived in Pittsburgh since 2001, really. Um, so it's, it's been a while, 19 years. That's crazy. I've lived in Mississippi now longer than I've lived anywhere else. Like any one place because yes, you guys moved, you know, a few times when you were younger. Yeah, absolutely. So like. I was born in Batavia, New York. We moved to Albany. We moved back to Batavia. We moved to Philadelphia. We moved to Pittsburgh. I moved to York, uh, Pennsylvania for college. And then I moved to North Carolina for two years. And then I moved here. So, yeah. That's... I've been Southern more than I was Northern, almost. (laughs) Not really, but almost. In a couple more years, definitely. I mean, you adopt a southern accent if you're around enough people Yeah, long enough. Um, Like on our knit nights, when we had them in person, um, (laughs) before the pandemic. Yeah. uh, Depending on how long people were there, you would adopt the 
you get that playing <laughs> in your voice. Yeah. But a lot of people do that. They sort of empathetically pick up uh, accents. Yeah. yeah. Little idiosyncrasies of what other, how other people speak. When I was in line to get bagels at the farmer's market yesterday, um, the guy behind me was from Pittsburgh and I started saying yins instead mm. of y'all because that is a very, I still say slippy though. And nebby you do, quite a bit. you say nebby a lot. Yeah. I mean, not a lot, but <laughs> in like context, you, you said it several times. And I mean, I, I inferred what it meant based on context, but I had never heard it before I met you. Nosy up in other yeah. people's business, not staying in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> something that i struggle with so this um is a podcast neither is about it? football nor about dialects <laughs> um and if it was it about is... either of those two things it would be pretty terrible because like our knowledge of both those things is very small <laughs> that is accurate that is an accurate statement um we would not be on episode 505 that is for sure <laughs> Um, speaking of which, Michael, Michael is my husband and he is, he comes to me sometimes with what he considers these great ideas. And he's like, and sometimes they are not to be, you know, judgmental or anything, but he's like, you know, he listens to a lot of podcasts, um, mostly tech or weather or, you know, things in his wheelhouse. Airplane control thing. Yes. Air traffic. Yeah. He, uh. And so he supports several of them on Patreon. And um, he's like, you know, a lot of them do ads where they read out the ad. So it's in the podcaster's voice. And so like it, you know, and they make a lot of money. And I'm like, that's great. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't understand. This is not my job. You know, not we that offer... there's anything wrong. With there's podcasts. not. Right. But it's yeah, not my job. And it... nothing. If it was my job, that would be one thing, but I don't want it to be because then the joy, you risk losing that joy yeah, over something you enjoy doing. So he keeps pushing me and pushing me and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to it leave you out. like Michael, I almost called you the other day because I had a toad outside my house and I wore <laughs> a or something that hops. Yeah. And I saw it and I was like, I should call Michael. Because he would like this, and he could come get it out of my house. Like <laughs> it wasn't out of my house; it was outside of the flower beds. But yeah. he lives in the little hole in my cement un- that goes like underneath my driveway. Oh yeah, like in between the um, sidewalk and the driveway, there's that little hole. Like that's a where, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where the toad lives, or frog, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and Laura says that because Michael keeps. He has a little toad army in the garage. Um, I'm surprised he has not asked you to knit costumes for the toad army. I'm not certain that I would be on board. I mean, I guess it would be a quick process, but um, only one of them has a name. And it's Big Mama. And it's because she's the biggest. And she's lived like a year. And sometimes he takes her up to his office and forgets about her. (laughs) <laughs> oh, poor big mama yeah it was last week sometime he was like i lost big mama and i'm like that sounds like a problem you have to fix i'm not getting involved <laughs> in that problem where did he end up finding her on his desk um, he well he's got all of these shelves um he is very into organization of his supplies um and it was on one of his shelves behind some tools or something. She found a cool, dark place and was happy there. So <sighs> anyway, this is also not a podcast about toads. Your husband's toad army. <laughs> it is about crafting. We are amazing at being off topic today. Yeah. I think the on topic will be the exception to the rule today, um, <laughs> which is good because I've got basically nothing. No, you're working on your giant blanket. Um, yeah, so there's a link in the show notes. I am crocheting a bunch of granny squares. Um, and the show notes can be found at the yeah. with 3 lscom Correct. Um, so 
simple granny squares. The blanket takes almost 800 of them total. And it's in 17 different colors. I had already finished the first complete skein of each, which was about 25 of each colors. And then, but the total count for each color varied between like 32 to 45, somewhere in that range, because they don't, you don't use the exact same number of squares for every color. But, um, so this week I started uh, finishing off the colors using the second skein, trying to get, you know, finish off, have all of the pink that I needed and all of the dark pink that I needed and all that. Yeah, so, I think I would have started assembly and then like as I ran out, then started. Yeah. Uh, I, in order for me to, to do assembly, they all need to be in their like numbered containers. And I, I just want the crocheting of them to be done because the assembly will probably take me a year and I'll just work off and on on little bunches of assemblies. Yeah. So, Are they crocheted together or is it something you totally can different? do several different ways. The um, designer also talks to you through how you can do crochet as you go, like join as you go, but you, it would be enormous at the end. Like you'd constantly be moving. It, it's like a um, miter square sort of. Yeah. Like eventually you'd be moving around the entire blanket as you're adding squares to it. So, or I guess you could do, you know, split it into sections and seam that. I just plan to seam it um, like through sort of a modified blanket stitch. Um, mm -hmm. Seaming it together. You could also slip stitch it together or crochet with a single color all the squares together but um, I don't know I'll try a couple of different methods when I get to that point it sounds but, like you should buy a big hammock for outside and then when it's cool out you could lay in your big hammock and put stuff together and then they keep you warm why a big ham I have I can you have your lay chair. Can you yeah lay but I can stretch out and actually like stretch my legs out and everything in it Oh, okay. Well, anyway. Um, so once I finished the first skein of each color, I still had 168 squares left to do. Holy crap. Out, which means the 17. So this week I, I crocheted 101 of them. So I've wow. just got 67 left. Um, well, 66 <laughs> left. Um, they're really good. This week has been, I, I've had some um, like life stuff happen this week. Um, I'm fine. Everybody's fine. But it's just been very distracting and has been difficult to sort of um, keep concentration on anything. So these have been great because these are 10 minutes and then you're done. Um, yeah. And they're very easy to pick up and put down. So um, it's been very cathartic. I've been able to get through several um, of the colors and uh, it's also given my hands something to do. So, yeah, I've got 67 more really. squares, hoping that I will finish them this week. And then maybe next week I'll have a couple of pieces seamed just to see how I want to do it. But no promises. Um, and then I've got one other thing that I'm working on, and that is my entire show. And that is all I've got. Um, you have like stuff you're reading and stuff. Um, this week has been, uh, it has been a week. Let's see. All right. So the other thing that I'm working on, I saw Leading Men did a kit for this. Leading Men was one of several um, companies that did a kit for this. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I needed it, like with a burning passion <laughs> I, I see what you did there yeah so this is well the pattern is by kino knits um it is and it's dumpster fire 2020 so this is knit and it's knit in pieces and then assembled um full disclosure she did gift us the pattern she did gift but us the pattern. already bought the kit before she even gifted us Correct. the pattern i just planned on purchasing the pattern but um, she gifted us the pattern. I don't know if she knew that um, I had bought the kit or she not. She did not because oh. she gifted me the pattern. Okay. She's like, you have to send it to Leslie, let her know. And I was like, she might have already bought it because I know she bought the kit. 
yeah so um i hadn't yet because i i wasn't sure when it was going to come in because it was a pre-order and i didn't really read the listing very well my fault not steven <laughs> my life yeah i was just like yes i need that so um you can knit this in any weight but it uh the kit that i bought was fingering weight um and again this is kino knits uh the pattern is dumpster fire 2020 and um it's it's the pattern uh, half of the proceeds through i think the end of the year are going to her local food bank and then yep. if you buy the kit from one of the vendors um the leading men fiber arts queen city yarn black cat fibers arkansas yarn company or wonderland yarn slash fragis fibers those are the same company they um half of or not half a portion of the kit cost goes to the local food banks for those companies so For a charity yeah yeah so um it's it's very uh what's the word you're giving back and sort of a roundabout way um the pattern is great there are videos for everything um there's videos for uh center double decreases her modified ssk the way that she does her increases, how she does the duplicate stitch for the the year numbers. And she gives you a chart for every number. So in case you want to change the year. And then she's also got a video on how you put it together, like the assembly, how you sew all the pieces together, which is super helpful. I watched it already, even though I haven't put it together. So you read ahead in a pattern? I'm well, so <laughs> I was like, I'm just knitting this little... Um, flame so i'll i'll turn this on and watch it uh in the background so let me all of the, the yarns fit into this little tiny Aww. Bag here. um i think i'll do well, it, it in a tiny way. ornament so it is um it depends on what weight you knit it in but yeah because i chose um the fingering weight that's what i've got so these are colors from Leading Men Fiber Arts. I think this is nacho cheese. This is, or no, wait. One of these is nacho cheese, the orange, maybe. I can't remember. This is out spot. This is something to do with money. Is um, there the a safety dance? Maybe. Yeah, is all the way work? to the bank could maybe safety dance or something is the orange. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. Um. All the way to the bank is the green. Um, out damn spot. That's the red. Nacho cheese is the orange. Okay. And saffron is the yellow. Gotcha. I feel like they have a colorway named Safety Dance. I could be making that up. Safety though. something. Yeah, I, I do remember that bright orange. Um, because they have a brilliant way of showing their swatches. Leading Men Fiber Arts has a brilliant way of showing their swatches. Um, they've just got like eight inch squares knit in every colorway and they put them in these binders so you can flip through them and gives yep. you a really nice way of showing everything. Steve so, knits them at shows. Like yeah. that's what he works on at shows. So this, these are all the pieces. <laughs> they haven't been blocked or anything. So uh, let me pull apart one of every color here. Um, all right, here we go. So you have to soak them and pin them out into shape, which I haven't done yet. But once you do that, you're attaching them to each other and then to the uh, the dumpster as well in a way that, that hides all the ends. But yeah, so there's my little flames and there's three sets of these. And then, because I apparently suck at reading directions, this is the dumpster, and it's just a long strip, and then you sort of fold it back on itself, and it creates the sort of shape for you to oh, fill the dumpster. But yeah. for some reason, I purled the first section instead of knitting it. I don't know why. Oh. So I have to rip this out. <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, snip the yarn, and then pull this out and re-knit it. it. It'll only take me like probably half an hour and then I'll just um, Kitchener it yeah. back together. I could just re-knit the whole thing. It would probably take me less than an hour, but I'm obstinate. 
that way. So I've heard that about you. you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I should be able to assemble this this week and maybe show you guys if I have time to get it finished um, next week. The assembly doesn't look like it's going to take very long based on the video. Um, so where are you going to uh, display it? Uh, this one is a gift for someone. And then okay. I will knit, um, I plan to knit a couple more probably. But it also shows you how to make it into an ornament with the um, the strings at the top of the flames. They sort of come together to create this tie where you can hang it. Oh, cool. So um, it's functional that way. But yeah, that's it. That's what I've got this week. It's all you now. It's all me? Yep, it's well, all you. I am knitting on a sock currently. I thought I'd be able to get it done during the Steelers game, but um, this was one of the first socks that I machine knit the tube. Oh yeah, and I had dropped a bunch of stitches, and then when I went to rip back, it was it took me forty five minutes to try to like, and then I finally just ended up cutting it because the yarn had also gotten like, um, like split. And put melt multiple oh, rows down, separate. and that was yeah. it. Was it was just a mess. But this is um, so these blanks, like the tube part, so like from here to there, was machine knit on our Earhart gear backer, backer gear heart. Yeah, there you go, speedster. There you go. Leslie knows names of things. <laughs> <laughs> that is my one talent. <laughs> You're so amazing. Um, and then I added yarn. I attached yarn because the tube was very small because this was one of the first ones that I did and knit the ribbing. And then I pulled back and knit the toe, but this one was messed up. So I I ended up cutting the yarn and um, just re-knitting, which means that this piece of sock has like, at the end, it's going to have like, 15 ends to weave in but whatever it'll be fine um is the tension so, very different from the machine part to your the part you knit yes it always is okay and i knit it on zeros i think i bought some double zeros thinking maybe i should go down and that would make it more even it's not as bad on um like this one i don't know that you'll be able to see but this one is like fresh yarn uh-huh and then this one is like rip back yarn. So, and so the fresh, rip back yarn. Fresh yarn, you mean that hasn't been part of the knitted tube? Yeah, it was from the cake. Okay. Uh, but when you rip back your yarn that, that was knitted, it's all kinky. It's uh, like if you pull from a sock a blank. blank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my gauge changes with that. But if you do that, you have less ends to weave in. If you pull back on both ends, because um, it'll rip out on both sides. But anyway, I got the cuffs done. I got the toes done, and I'm working on the first heel. And these are some old, old, old yarn pirate. I think in the pumpkin head colorway. I'm thinking it's vintage 2008, maybe 2009. Um, she was like my first, and she's no longer dying that I know of. But she was my first indie that I was mm -hmm. just obsessed with um, and have the stash of it to show. So this year, I've been cranking tubes out of that stash and trying to knit some of it up. And I think this is my second one that I've finished out of her yarn or will be finishing out of her yarn. So these are some Halloween socks for our Halloween craft all the things um, that hopefully will be done Maybe tomorrow. I think I might watch the Bills game and finish them up and then weave in all the ends, which is always my downfall. I really liked how the yarn pooled, though, on this. Yeah. It's like a mystery. I do miss that about hand knitting socks because I, I just rarely hand knit socks anymore um, unless it's sport weight. And usually that's a stripe. Uh, I do miss seeing the randomness in the pooling and flashing of a hand yeah. eye. I, um, yeah, I tend to hand it self-striping and then, well, I don't know. 
there is more sock yarn in this house. If I don't start cranking and finishing stuff up that I will be knitting socks for the rest of my life. And that's not a terrible thing, but I did finish the, um, Oh, the, um, socks on a plane socks recently that were hand knit. And that yeah. was fun. And also the rainbow strip ones that I knit for Becca were hand knit because with sock tube socks, the only heel choice you really have is an afterthought heel. Mm -hmm. And for some people, um, like my friend Becca, that does not work for her foot. It's not going to work for everyone's foot. So um, in that case, hand knitting with the heel flap and such is always fun. But, And I don't know, actually, that the cranking of the tube really saves me a ton of time. I would say that it probably saves me maybe 12 hours. But it still takes me like eight hours to knit yeah. the heels, toes, and cuffs. I agree. And it really takes around maybe 22 hours for me to knit a pair of socks. So maybe it saves me like 14 hours. But it's not as much as you would think it would be in my brain, which is, yeah. you know, always thinking that things take less time than they actually do. Like, I'll tell Leslie, I'm going to ply these four skeins of yarn today. And she's like, really? And I'm going to make bats. And I'm going to spin bats. <laughs> and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And what do I do? None of it. But I did uh, work on, I went to a baby shower this week. We all were masked and socially distanced. Uh, and it was at work. And um, so I got some... I turned the heel and got a couple inches knit on my Knit Spin Farms Little Known Holidays Club in the Tolkien colorway. And we just got, um, she just went off hiatus because she had taken a dying hiatus because she had hurt her like rotator cuff, I think, shoulder. Um, so she hasn't been dying for a little bit, but now Joanna's back, Joanna and Bill of Knit Spin Farm. And so, um, their new pomegranate day just arrived, which means that I should finish these. These are sport weight socks. This is the Wendy's toe up gusset method. And um, I'm knitting them on size one needles, the Addy Turbo squared. And I cast on for these 52 stitches. So... Yeah, I'll do like another two inches and then some ribbing and then the first one will be done and I'll work on the second one. But these are these live in my like backpack that I take everywhere. And so when I have a little bit of time mm -hmm. when I'm sitting around at work in a meeting, um, which we haven't had nearly as many meetings this year as we have had in the past. Um, or if um, like I'm doing something else. Uh, like waiting at Kroger to pick up groceries. Yeah. Then I will knit a couple rounds. So I actually started these when I was getting COVID tested over the summer. <laughs> That's where I started them. So slowly but surely, they're getting some progress. Um, yeah. So those live in my backpack. And then I have two more things to show. Both of which are like color work. And oh my gosh, this is driving me nuts. I've had to rip this back. Like if we did a knitting attacks segment, like the Knit More Girls, this is like all my knitting attacks all the time. <laughs> is it a complex pattern? No. Did I have to rip it back four times yesterday? Multiple rows? Yes. Oh. So this is the Descent Cowl. And it is a cowl. The top of it has this like pearl stitch. And then it has two other sections of pattern, which are more complex than this. So I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> All of it is slip stitch. And the blue that I'm using is from Girl Fibers in her navy on her DK cashmere merino nylon base. I cannot spell nylon and no one corrected that. So it was misspelled in the show notes last week. Sorry, y'all. Um... And then the white is not actually white. It's got these like pops of hot pink and brown in it and blue. And it is Kim Dyes Yarn, who's one of my favorite indie dyers. And her brioche DK 
in um, the Sunday Brunch colorway. And this was actually, she sells like half skeins of her DK weight, which I love because sometimes you don't need a full skein. Sometimes you only need that smidge. So this is one of the half skeins that's 140 yards. So, and that's exactly what this pattern called for. So hopefully I'll have enough to get through it, but if not, it'll be fine. So this was going to be like my quick on size. I put in the show notes what size these are. I think they're fours or I think they're fours on size four needles and just do it real fast. And, you know, I should definitely be able to tell when I'm off because it's these straight lines. No, nope. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so I'm done with the pearl segment. And then um, I'm going to start the second segment and hopefully that one will go a little smoother and maybe I'll have some progress on this this week. I'd like to wear this to vote, but we'll see. Um, we will see. And then the last thing that I'm working on is a baby hat because, you know, slip stitch isn't difficult enough. I had to add some fair aisle into my life. And this is um, a test knit for uh millie's knit designs and it's the grange hat and i offered to test knit the baby size because y'all know i love baby hats and the um stitch pattern the like fair isle reminds me of knit stitches and it makes me super happy so i'm knitting yeah. this wee little baby hat and i'm almost through like row seven of 24 so i've got a ways to go but i just cast on yesterday and the pattern, which is super well written, calls for um, sixes and eights. And I'm having to knit it on fours and fives to get gauge. So there's that. <laughs> and that's on me. Like, that's just because I'm such a loose knitter. Yeah. I'm using some ancient stash. This is Lorna's Laces Green Line Worsted in the Mirth colorway that I apparently bought from Nitty Couture. I don't even know where Nitty Couture is anymore. It was in St. Louis. Was it? Remember, we went up there to see Jackie. Okay. I'm it was glad you were We went up there the day they opened. Okay. That's probably when I bought this. So, like, 2009-ish? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's the only time we went. Did we go more than once? I think that was the only time we went. So, let's say this is 2009 stash. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it is, uh, like non superwash merino that's or organic, which is like pretty trend setting. Go Lorna's mm -hmm. laces. And then I'm using some hand spun from Spotted Circus. And I'm knitting on these little twist short combo needles that I use. Like a six inch cable, and then I use a two inch needle and a three inch tip. So five plus, so they're like 11 inches around. But I like having one long tip on my hand that's on the right hand side, and then one short tip. And it um, allows it to flip. Like I still have something to grip on. Mm -hmm. So. I like that. And I'm keeping these in a little star nuts bowl that I got. Oh, cute. That's just cute. I think she was doing um, the Virginia one and she showed bo like yarn bowls. And I was Saf. like, oh. yeah, uh, Sap is Ashford. It's but it begins with an S. It's the one in Virginia that you went to the one year. When you lived in South. Carolina. Not the one in Asheville, though, North Carolina. That's coming up. I, I don't remember. I don't know. I've never been. It sounds like a great festival, but I've never been because it's in Virginia during like the second month of like in early September. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that is it for me, I believe. Yes. That is everything for me. You finished a bunch of granny squares. Yeah, I didn't bring them up because they're just colors you guys have already seen. There's nothing exciting about them. I finished 101 of them. Yay. 
That's a lot, dude. It is a lot. I was averaging somewhere like 25 a week. This was much more than that, so. It is. You crocheted your stress away. (laughs) I crocheted. The stress did not leave, but. (laughs) (laughs) I have uh, three finished hand spuns, which you guys have seen the singles for from last week, but I finished the plying of them. So this is Witchy Witch. It was a dumpling bat. 4.1 4.1 ounces from Wool Pierogi, who's not currently making bats, but I wish she would because she is my favorite. It is 220 yards, so like a worsted weight. It's like, oh! <laughs> it's very nice and fluffy. I almost took out my soda onto my phone with that. That was very exciting. So it's nice and fluffy, nice and balanced. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a hat. I haven't decided yet. Hats are kind of like my go-to thing. Um, I offered to knit someone a hat at this baby shower because she was like, how do I get hand knits? Do I need to get pregnant in order to get them? And I was like, I'll knit you a hat. She's like, no, I want a little baby sweater. And I was like... But you don't have any babies. And she's like, and I was like, what would you do with it? And she said she'd put it on her wall. Oh. I mean, that's a sort of a passive aggressive way to get hand knits, but so I told her I would knit her a hat. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this, I don't know. It was like, yes, now like reflecting on it, it was a little bit. <laughs> and then... My second thing is, um, it was a Knit Spin Farm monthly bat club from 2019 in the Boo colorway. And it was made after um, Halloween, like, costume, uh, the costume aisle in Bill's, hollow, like, uh, store growing up. Like, a store that he would go to. So it's got lots of greens and glitters and purples and oranges and grays. And it's also happy. And this one is 200 yards. Yeah, I think you have these bat links. I think I do. You could spin your own. We could, you could spin them and then we could be twinsies. We could knit something that would match out of them. And then this is the chain ply of black on holiday from knit or from hello yarn. That came out pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it's BFL. Um, it was 26. So the other skein that I three plied was like four, and it's uh 220 yards. Everything was like 220 yards this week. Sometimes you get those weeks where it's like everything is the same yardage. And like the funny thing is, this is a chain ply, which is essentially a three ply, mm-hmm. but the other two are two plies, and the other two are like woolen spun, mm-hmm. and this is not. This is worsted spun. So, yeah. It is nice and soft. And I have no, maybe mitts. It's like a self-striping because it was chain plied. Yeah. I don't know. I was happy with it, though. So that is my spinning. I have another, uh, like, a pumpkin spice latte, I think is the name of it, set of bats on the wheel from Mork Made Fiber, who's no longer making bats. Because after I started the first one, I was like, ooh, I like this. Um... But she went went to try to buy more, and there was yeah, none to be had. None to be had. So, yeah. Um, so, I'll finish those, and that'll be my one bat set from her. But it's it's fun. I have other bats. You do. Just a few. Um, Into the world has bats up and people have not bought them and they've been sitting there for a full 24 hours. And do you know how hard it's been? They, they, she has, uh, they have, because it's Chris. You did buy something from into the world though, didn't you? I did, but I didn't buy a bat. Um, they have captain tight pants up Mm. in bat form. And that is like my ultimate favorite colorway of theirs followed by death, uh, which was, um, one of the Discworld colorways. Yeah, I would like to get never that. Redone. But I was going to say they'd never redone that one. So 
and I wasn't in that initial like um spin along so mega spin along yeah we'll have to um try to convince Chris and James that they should redo death because it's the best colors and also it's based on Terry Pratchett yeah the Discworld series and that that death character is great so absolutely and there's these terrible bbc uh movies that have mm-hmm. him but also they're not ter- they're terrible in the best it way oh like, yeah they very much encapsulate the idea of terry pratchett's world like the the color of magic which was the first one that had like sean what's his face in it as the traveler i can't remember he was in goonies it's our time. It's our time down here, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Aston. Sean Aston. Yeah. Somebody was screaming it at me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, like, yeah, they were going to do a TV show. I think it was supposed to come out already. I'll have to look and see what the progress on that is. Because yeah. I would like Terry Pratchett in my life right now. We don't get the BBC here, so... When Laura yeah. wants to watch Graham Norton, she has to go to YouTube. I know. I love Graham Norton. Like, that is just, he is my happiness. When I am having a crappy day, I watch stupid videos of, like, Will Smith dancing with Carlton <laughs> on the Graham Norton show. And it's just happiness. Alfonso Ribera. You don't know his name by heart? For I shame. Don't. They're redoing the Fresh Prince show. I told you this a couple months ago. <laughs> I know. I'm excited. Ridiculousness. But exciting ridiculousness. Um, anyway. Also, there is an American Girl doll. I found this out the other day. And it's one of their um, like historical collection. And she's from the 1980s. Oh, God. <laughs> and she's got like a, a Care Bears night shirt and a Pac-Man like freestanding video game, like the like co- like the whole console box game. So is this what you've asked your parents for for Christmas? <laughs> it's not, but I really kind of want one. But it, like it's an American girl cell, so it is very expensive. She comes with See, a I pack. had never heard of American girl dolls until Several years after I met you, it was not something that ever existed in my childhood that I even knew of. Mm -hmm. Cabbage Patch was as fancy as we got. I had one Cabbage Patch or two. One year, my mom got me a Cabbage Patch, but it wasn't the one I wanted. And I told her that, and she beat the crap out of me because she, it was one of those things like where you have to wait in line at Walmart. You know, this was the 80s, you know? Oh, yeah. They were like hot ticket items. You cannot yeah. find them anywhere. Whereas my mom was like, I'll make you a Cabbage Patch doll. And she <laughs> made me like a bootleg one. That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't as a kid, but. But I had Care Bears and um, Rainbow Bright. My brother had He-Man. But yeah, there's an 80s American Girl doll. It's very tempting. That also, is, uh, we're considered, it says on the thing, like, our historians research. And I was like, oh, gosh. It's only been 40 years. <laughs> it's proper vintage. <laughs> that was the worst English accent. <laughs> but proper vintage, that's now the title of the episode. Awesome. So um, what have you been I- reading? I don't even know. I, I've been listening to Alana Andrews' White Hot. I just skipped the scene where um, the animal mage's wife is killed. Yeah. I had to fast forward it's those heart minutes. It's heart yeah. I just could, I could not this week. So I fast forwarded through that. I was like, she dies. That's all I need to know. All of Ro- uh, Rogan's people also mm. die as they're being controlled by someone else. I, I know this. I have to... Yeah. I have to go forward. Um, so I'm like halfway through that. I've been actually, as wow. I was flying, that's what I was listening to. And then knitting on the socks a little bit today. Um, and then Friday night, I decided to read Brother Song by TJ Klune. Nope. And I read the whole thing. Nope. 
in one sitting. I was up till midnight. I like got home, ate some food, got into pajamas. It was like five o'clock. I can't believe I you did that till midnight. Said, That's amazing. And um, it and is also not, a terrible idea. <laughs> it is not my favorite. I think I need to reread it. Like I missed some stuff. Yeah, but I definitely you do read crazy fast. I like I don't know how you absorb anything. Mm. But Laura is like a speed reader. She reads unbelievably fast. But um, yeah, it's not my favorite. There was no real. So it's an adults male male paranormal, and it's the last in the series. It's the what fourth or fifth? Fourth. Fourth. I was reading um, several people on Goodreads were saying that like they didn't feel like the characters got as much growth and development in this one as yeah. in the other ones. So um, like this is his first the main character's first male male relationship and it's like that is just totally like skimmed over. Like there's it's like oh I don't know what to do. Oh we're we're in love. It's fine. Yeah. Like there's no like soul searching or there's no like conflict or that's not the yeah right so the main conflict was the overall arc of the whole series mm-hmm. where there's like an evil sorcerer who's related to two of the characters and he's trying to kill them all and um that conflict is like the main focus and there's very little i would say yes those people on goodreads who are like "Mm, it's not getting the character growth that i need i would agree with that because the secondary character that he's falling in love with stays a wolf 90 percent of the time yeah so well at least in the first or in the what was it the third i think he showed up at the end of the second one but yeah yeah. he was still completely a wolf when the last yeah and he's always been a wolf like he's never until the end of the last one where he says like one sentence that this other character he's been a wolf the whole time oh yeah and suddenly they're soulmates yeah i don't know i think the third one will forever be my favorite with robbie mm-hmm. um because he's just a funny, interesting character. I don't find either of these two characters particularly interesting. And there was room. Like, there was space for growth. And there was space for a really interesting backstory. But it just never really happened. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. It's rare and that a- TJ Klune doesn't do really well with a book yeah and it was tied up into like a very nice td like tidy package in the end that's hard yeah and i mean there's one death but when you have two huge conflicting armies going to battle i asked and they weren't shy about killing people in previous books he wasn't shy about it i mean so i kind of feel like there should be some yeah major death of a major character that just well, never happened i mean i guess i'm glad that it didn't emotionally gut you because those books have emotionally gutted me in the past oh yeah absolutely um but it's sad that it didn't quite live up to the hope um yeah and but, i don't read like i don't pay for books a whole lot anymore mm-hmm. like i do a lot of library reads or so this was one that i sprang for yeah um because I love his stuff, but it is what it is. And yeah. maybe on a reread it will get better. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. Um, I'm like that with music sometimes. Like the first time I hear it, I may not I may really dislike it. And then after I hear it a couple more times, I find things about it that I like. Um, I've been loving Tina Turner lately, music wise. I need that like upbeat. I've been listening to, uh, well, not this week, but before this week, I was listening to a fair amount of um, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Uh-huh. Trying to, just because I, I 
I know some Cardi B songs, but I had never heard of Megan Thee Stallion before. I don't know why. So um, that's what my Amazon music history <laughs> looks like uh, over the last month or so. I share a Prime account with my parents. Yeah, so that's probably. Mine uh, tends to be more subdued on there. Yeah. Probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, for reading, I'm still rereading the Alice Worth series. Haven't had a ton of time to read uh, this week. And I'm also re listening to the Hidden Legacy series. That's the one Laura was talking about. Where um, are you on that? I'm still in the first one. Um, I, I like that one a lot. I really like the animal mage um, part because uh, with Cornelius, because I like how they sort of underestimate him. And then when his animals do like the house break in and they just like completely reevaluate him. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, that's in the second one though. That's in the second one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like Cornelius as a character. It is gutting when his wife yeah. dies and you realize that the only empathy he's ever had mm-hmm. or human connection he's ever had has really been her. Yeah, because in this universe, um, that particular character is an animal mage. And because he can essentially talk to animals, he bonds with animals before he can even talk. And so in a lot of cases, those people sometimes never talk, sometimes never become fully functioning like adults in society. Yeah. So um, Anyway, so I, I listened to the entire Kate Daniels series, then the Innkeeper series, although I still haven't listened to the like Christmas one. Um, but I listened to, one? to those. Yeah, that like three, it's only like three hour, or maybe it's not Christmas, I don't know, but it's the short one that just got released. Oh, um, it's the one what, where she's on his planet, the sister, that one? No, that one's the fourth one, and I already listened to it. Oh, maybe I missed one. The third one. I forget what it's called, but it's only like three hours. Um, audio huh. that's only like three hours. But it's Sean and Dina. It's not um, Maud. Huh. Um, to, I do uh, like that one, the Maud one, where she's on the vampire planet. Yeah, I like that one a lot. There's a lot of growth of her as a character. That's my dog. Yeah, someone is existing. There's been this white cat that keeps jumping on the fence and taunting her. So that's been super fun at 3 a.m. <laughs> and it's not a possum. Hey, that was rude. She just came in and barked at me. How dare she? Rude dog. What are you doing? Your auntie Leslie says hi. Now the knitting must stop. Because you have to have a hand to pet her. Yeah. If you don't pet her, she will look at you and bark in your face. (laughs) Which is a new, like, COVID thing. Because we were (laughs) home together so much this spring. Mm -hmm. Like, it never happened before that. Have you seen the video of the dog that's got, like, the buttons? And it can basically, like, talk? Mm Mm-mm. I think I sent it to you and Amy and Sarah. You'll have to go back. Oh, yeah. I'll have to go back and look. I didn't see that. I feel like Pearl would be epic at, like, those buttons. But (laughs) she would just say the same thing. (laughs) It reminds me of that um, series. I read a series uh, by Helen Harper. Um, uh, It was a magic series. I can't remember which one it was. It wasn't the Godmother one. But it was a magic series, and um, this one character figured out a way for her cat to talk. Uh, but 99% of what it said was just food followed by an expletive. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think I read that one. Yeah. I feel like that would be Pearl, too. Yeah, that might be a good one to reread. I'm very much into rereading right now. So. I think you'd like the Ordinary Magic series by Devin yeah, Monk. Yeah, De- by Devin Monk, you uh, mentioned that, so it's on that list. Because um, the yeah. new one in that series just came out, so that's on my list. But I think I'm going to reread, because it's been a while since I've read. And there's also some short stories that fall in there. Mm-hmm. 
So you just have to kind of be aware that the reading order might be a little bit different than what Amazon says. Because Amazon's a liar. I need the new Reese Ford to come out. And she hasn't even like said that there is one. So. Mm. <sighs> How put anyway. upon I know. Why aren't why aren't my favorite authors writing books at a speed of which I I need them to? Yeah. Although the new Don't... Megan Whale and Turner came out, so what series is that? The Thief. It's a uh, young adult slash middle grade, but more young adult um fantasy. And I like it because in the first book it has an unreliable narrator, and you know that's my mm. favorites. Um, so it's got like this heist element, but also this unreliable narrator. And it only, it also has like its own mythology, like a, almost like a Greek mythology or Egyptian mythology type, uh, Parthenon, um, but different. And this is the, after she's been writing these books since like 1990 or something. Wow. And this is the last one and it's the fifth. So I've been waiting wow. some time, like some time. 30 years and five books. Yeah. I mean, so I'm not I'm gonna... critiquing the process. I don't write books, so I have no concept of how long it takes. But And it's not like she's written, like, other books in the m- meantime. Like, this is it. Mm-hmm. So this is the last one. Um, so I'm very excited about that. It's been, like, Tamora Pierce, who's also one of my favorite middle grade fantasy people, has also taken a long time between books. And patience is not my favorite virtue. (laughs) But at least we live in a world where you have endless amounts of books at your fingertips. Oh my goodness, yes. And you don't even have to leave your bed for them. Yeah, I mean, I got hard copies of that. And then another one of my favorite unreliable narrators, which is The False Prince, then... I think the last one in that series just came out. So I just bought that too. I don't know if it's the last one, but the newest one just came yeah. out. Also a good series. If you like middle grade fantasy, she writes some good um, historical fiction too. But yeah. You're about like the Berlin wall and stuff, which is not a historical fiction that you see in middle grade a whole lot about. Yeah. So, Yeah. That's it for me, really. We're still yeah. doing the Halloween, knit all the things, craft all the things. We are, yeah. And the hashtag is in the show notes. It's TKG Halloween C A T T. Um, we're drawing from both Instagram and Ravelry because we know Ravelry is not accessible to everyone. So if you use the hashtag on Instagram, we'll also draw prizes from there. I totally forgot to grab the amazing prizes that people have donated. That's because you're a terrible so, human being. They're in the other room. It's because I have no room in this room for prizes. <laughs> it's funny. Laura's got this three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. You know, it's not tiny, but it's a really good size, you know, plenty of space house. And there's... It's a thousand square feet. There's no space anywhere. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Um, but you know what? You're a grown-up and it is your house. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. I know. SSK does take up the majority It does. Of That's the true. Time. Half the garage, yeah. Um, anyway. anyway. Yeah, I think that's it. Anything I agree. Else that you need to add? Um, no, just be patient and kind to each other as much as possible. Please vote. Whoever you vote for, please vote. Yeah. Um, there's no other way that your voice will be heard. Um... But yeah, aside from that, I guess we will see you next week. Bye, Bye, y'all.